I really just may as well move into this place at this point. I swear, I'm always here. There's just always something I need, though. I need garden stakes, because my trellises, my vandas on them are falling over. And nuts edge killer. Oh my gosh. Stop. It is way too early for that. Look at how purple these lavenders are. That is beautiful. So dark. So why does it zoom in when I go to the face camera? This is not working. It smells really good in here. See the... Why am I pointing to the front? It's back. I got... I bought the lavender. Oh, it smells good. I hate using the front camera. I can't, uh, you can't zip, nothing. Can't, what a waste. It's smart. Smart, huh. Interesting. Was thinking about picking up some Danios for the pool pond. They can take cooler temperatures, and I already have a big school of giant Danios in there. It's gonna add to it a little bit. Cause uh, you know, they help eat the bugs and critters that fall in there. Oh, 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 oh. That's a pretty koi. Very skittish. Oh, you pretty. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, yeah, you're really pretty too. Uh, they only have three. Oh, that makes me thirsty. Love a school of quarries. They do so much better in groups. Look at that. That looks so cool. Finally, home with the fish. Got the koi here, got some little mollies and some danios, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, all right. These have been floating for a while, probably about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. There you go. And in here have the mollies and danios, little guys. Go ahead and let them go. Go on, go on. There you go. Oh, those are pretty. Those are just the creamsicle mollies. Of course, I got orange ones because, hey, that way they'll blend right in with the goldfish. I just have always loved creamsicle mollies. I think they're really pretty. I really like sailfin mollies, but I don't really see those for sale that often. Not where I live, at least. Not in a while. Like I said, they're just good at eating the little bugs and stuff in the water, and they're just sort of fun to have. They're not hardy where I live. I move all these inside when it starts to get cold out, so they'll be fine. They'll be going into a pond in my grow space. I don't really put any salt or anything in here, but during the winter time I do add a little bit of salt just to get some minerals and things in the waters because I use this water to water my orchids during the winter time. Molly's and koi and they seem fine with it. The danios, I already have, you look, you'll probably never see them. But there's at least a dozen of those danios in here and they have been fine. They can also go a little bit cooler than other tropical fish. Not that they should, but should the weather get unpredictable and uh, they're, they're, they're pretty much okay. Never lost any of the Danios. They're, like I said, though, <laughs> we'll probably never see them. Oh, hey, hey, wait, never mind. Hey, wait, come back. Where, where'd you go? I'll throw some food in there, see if they come out. Have some of the bug bites here. I like these just because the protein source in there is, like, natural to them. It's not, like, chicken and weird stuff. But, uh, yeah, that green's a little bit big. They may not be able to get to it. Just tip. Uh-uh. Hey, that's not for you. Always trying to get the food. No, 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 no. These are also a sinking food, so some sink, some float, they mostly sink. Yeah, I didn't think they would probably go for that. Some of the gambooses are, some of the guppies, the minnows, mosquito fish. All right, and I just threw some tropical crisps in there. It's not like a super healthy food, but I like that I can crumble them up and they sink a little bit slower. They don't dirty the water quite as much, but it's not like the highest quality food. They're eating it, so that's good. That's all good. So they're eating. Like I said, the Danios, oh, you know, did you lose your friends? Yeah, they're up here. Wrong way, bud. Uh, yeah, the Danio, I don't, you're not, we're not gonna see the Danios. Probably not, but I'm sure they're picking out on them too. And that black coral up in here that I put in this planter last week, or put this whole planter together last week, that thing's already got a new leaf. And wait, last week, it's actually been two days, but it will have been a week since that video is out. Doing great. New leaf popping up in there. Okay, guys. That's why you can't let the water level come up all the way because they'll jump right out. Doesn't matter. I was, I was done over here anyways. Oh, that fairly well sums up my Friday night. Didn't hear anything that was strong enough to do that. Hey, guess it was windy with the storms. Storms are windy. What a breakthrough. I just woke up. Hey, dogs. I mean, look at that. That's kind of crazy. Rips a leaves right off the elephant ears. Just came through and ripped those right off. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Just 
boom, pulled their heads right off. These Thai giants are getting huge. Trying to get the dogs to sit under them, so there's like a size comparison, but it's not, they won't, you won't behave, will you, Toby? I don't even exist right now. They've already had their food. They don't need me anymore. What's up, Tuck? What's up, Tuck, Tuck? Oh, your head's a little wonky. That's probably my fault. We were snuggling in the pool last night. I'm actually cold right now. It's like 65 degrees. Feels weird. I'm okay with it though. What a beautiful day. You may have been wondering, what's with all the fish stuff this week and last week? Been prepping for something. Something I've wanted for a long time. Sturgeon. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little unboxing here. Pop this guy open, have a look. Uh, oh, oh wait, hold on. They're yeah, already over here. Got these guys temperature acclimating. These are sturgeon. Sturlets, to be more specific. Sort of tucked them back there into the shade a little bit. The sun's really strong. It's not hot out. Not really, it's like 80, but the sun, very, very, very strong. See if we can't get a look at these guys without having to disturb them too much. Look at that. Aren't those awesome? I said these are sturlets, which are kind of how it sounds. Mini sturgeon, they still get pretty big. They score a little bit slower. They don't get as big as your regular sturgeons do, so they're a little bit more appropriate for pond use. Probably not tank. You'd have to have a pretty big tank for these guys. But yeah, they are awesome. I've actually been looking for sturlets for a good decade, probably. Nobody sells them in the U.S. They're pretty hard to come by. You can find sturgeon, not the sturlets. Look at them. Little bitty sharks. So freaking cool. So much personality. Active fish. Never stop moving. These are so freaking cool. So freaking cool. Can't even explain to you how excited I am about these. Have them temperature acclimating. I'm not going to drip them. They've been in a box for the last 24 hours. So when you open that up, your ammonia is going to spike. If it had only been a couple hours, if I had actually picked these up from the place and brought them here, I'd, I'd drip them. But not doing that. Uh, I'm going to be keeping kind of a close eye on these guys. I'm going to be pulling some of the big koi out of here and moving them out to my friend's farm. He has a really, really, really big pond to put them in. Because uh, the koi, they'll eat whatever they can fit in their mouth. You may not think that the koi would eat the sturgeon, but one of my koi ate my Oscar. I have the video of it. I mean, look at that. That's an Oscar inside the mouth of that koi. Yeah, I mean, they're omnivores. They'll, if they can fit it in their mouth, they'll eat it. It seems unlikely to me, but it's not really a risk I want to take. I'm going to give these guys a little bit to float and let them go and talk about them a little bit, try to get some better shots of them. Cut the big guys. As I mentioned before, when the koi get too big for my ponds, for the pool ponds, they go off to my friend's farm. I think they're gonna be a lot happier. These guys have all gotten pretty big. That one's not huge, but it's the one that ate the Oscar, so it's gotta go. And uh, yeah, I kinda thought it's the chance to have one last good look at these guys, cause it's a big, kinda murky pond they're going to. It's a huge, healthy pond, but uh, be able to see them this well when they get there. I don't wanna leave them in here too long though, cause my aerators are dead, so. Here we go, having a last look. Last look at these beauties. I'm gonna miss you guys. Yes I am. Except for you, little butthead, eating my fish. This is what I meant by water's a little bit more murky. I put a hefty amount of salt in here to kind of soothe them a little bit from transport, and then the water washed up on my aquaponics table. Sediment got in there, and yeah, but they're fine. It's only for about 48 hours, and they're going off to the big pond. So this is the 750, 6 by 6 by 32. It's like 720, I think, but yeah. They'll be fine in here. Let's go ahead and release these guys. They've been waiting long enough. Oh, that's not want the water outside the pond. There we go. Yeah, I got that outer bag removed so we can get a better look at these guys. My god, these are beautiful. Awesome fish. Look at the their barbells, those mouths, just like a stingray mouth. Once they're in there, you know, sturgeon, they're pretty active fish. It's gonna be a little bit harder to get footage of them once they're actually in there swimming around. Man, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. I don't know if I mentioned, I got these from Predatory Fins, so check out their website. They have really, really cool imports, great variety of fish, it is nothing in focus. Pop that bag open and smell the ammonia immediately, so got to get these guys out. There we go. Come on, guys. It's all right. You're okay. You're okay. There you go. There you go. Nice. Yeah, see, <laughs> You can't even see them. It's partially the lighting, but I'm trying to do one of these things here. Man, that looks like sharks, don't they? All right, so everything's settled in. I do want to throw an air pump in here. 
I had everything set up and, well, just about set up and ready to go and my air stone was cracked, so I'm gonna run to the store real quick, get an air stone. I'm also at the coordinator. I usually get that in bulk, but I'll get a little bottle just like to have one around to be safe and take these guys inside. You have fun outside today? You having a good day? All right, I'm gonna run to the pet store, have a look at some fish and see, <laughs> see if I can't find uh, a nice heavy air stone for the pond. Look at that Akara! Some glass catfish, looking fancy. I love Oscars. I had some of you. Ah, you're not gonna focus. That is a beautiful peacock cichlid. You're getting lots of camera time because you sexy. Not so much the angelfish though, they're just angelfish. Love a school of clown loaches. So cool. And parrotfish. This place has so many cool plants. I mean, it's not a crazy variety, but I like how they have them laid out. Look at these monsters. These are Black Paku. This is a like, humongous giant tank they have built into the place. Yeah, the owner said some of those are over 40 years old. I mean, look at, that's a pretty good sized tank. Man, beast. I love Pacos. They are really cool. All right, time to go. One way. That sucks. Uh, where are you going, Colby? Got home, throwing some food out for the tortoise real quick. Brought the birds back out. Gonna finish getting things going for the sturgeons. Doing some shredded romaine today. I like to spread it around. Kind of has to scavenge for it or, you know, graze more what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's some parrot. They make noise. Some tortoise pellets. Some more. Is this hard for you? Yeah, you can't eat any of this. Sorry about the parrots. It's just, it's, it's what they do. They just, they scream. Can't help it. Yeah, let's do some hibiscus. Hibiscus flower. Some leaves. Throw those down. There we go. You coming over, Colby? Aren't you hungry? No? All right. I don't know if it's coming through the camera, but the more you scream, the more I hear the hawk squawking. That's not safe, dude. We're gonna have to move you somewhere sheltered. At least keep him under the umbrella. Hey, how you doing? You having fun? You having a good time? <laughs> All right, back to fish stuff. Actually, you know what, on second thought, that sounds more like a blue jay to me than a hawk, so I'm gonna take these guys inside. Blue jay's a little bit more tenacious. And, come on, step up. Why don't you want to step up? You want to stay out? All right, what I was going to say is I also, they're an outdoor stand that has their food and water dishes on it. Got kind of rusted, so I had to throw it away, and I don't like for them to be without access to food and water for too long. They've already been out here for like 20 minutes, so I'm going to take them back in for now. Come on. <laughs> you don't want to go? Come on. What are you doing? Step up. Step up. There we go. All right. Back inside, here we go. You can go ahead and get this air pump set up. Finally. I'm gonna bring it over as close to the side of the pond as I can so that the air doesn't have to travel too far. Here's what I'm doing, putting down a pot, put my pump on top of it. They have another pot here, put some duct tape over the holes and put some slits on each side to allow air to flow through. This will help ventilate it and keep the air from inside of it from getting too hot. So I want to pump hot air in there. Go ahead, get that air stone on there, nice heavy one, and just and drop that in there. Make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. That way the bubbles have as much contact time with the water as possible. Uh, that's it. Easy. This keeps that pump protected for the most part, hopefully, unless there's like some extreme downpours and get that oxygen in the water. Eh, this really probably wasn't even necessary. I have two waterfalls going back there. There should be more than enough oxygen in here for the sturgeon. But temperatures can be a little bit wonky this time of year, and if things get warm, I want to make sure there's extra aeration in here. The sturgeon really don't like to go over 75 degrees, so if it's going to be warmer than that, you definitely need to have some extra oxygen in there. They're doing pretty well. Look at them. I think these guys are settling in just fine. Okay, now that that's done, gone ahead, I throw some pellets in here for the goldfish and koi. I kind of want to distract them a little bit while I get some sinking food in there for the sturgeon. I have a few different foods I'm going to offer them. First off, since they just got here, is the Rapashi Spawn and Grow. It has a good amount of protein in it and some fat. 
This is not something you would feed as a staple. It's just something to give fish that have just been shipped. You feed it to them for like a day or two just to kind of help boost them up and recover a little bit. But it's very, very, very fatty and it'll foul the water up really fast too. You just mix it into this like gelatinous gross paste here. See if they'll eat it. They're not going to take it off my fingers. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay. Wrong way. Yeah, I kind of thought that might happen. What's the problem with the rapache? I think the koi and goldfish are going to get to it before the sturgeon do and they really don't need it. So, pellets. I have here a blend of New Life Spectrum, one of the marine formulas, and um, a Hikari food. I don't remember which one. But the foods I picked out have a minimum protein of 40% and uh, you, that's what you want. You want a minimum of 40% protein in their food and that protein needs to mostly come from animals it shouldn't have too much soy in it not looking for a plant-based food for these guys you can see they're already eating or trying to eat 40 percent protein and about 15 percent oil so those would be fats they're not like the koi or the goldfish where their diet's going to vary throughout the year no it needs to stay pretty much the same consistently see they're not too interested in the repash oh never mind you just nibbled on it. I don't think he ate it, but I looked away. Hey, so a few days have passed, about four to be exact. I did go ahead. I added an extra air pump. I just, I was really paranoid about the oxygen situation. So I got a bigger pot, taped it up, poked some holes in it with a knife, pulled a twist tie through there to put the extension cord in so that that can be lifted up. Not going to get wet. So now there's two pumps moving air around in here. That's good. One of them's a dual outlet. So there's three air stones. I don't know why I just did four. There's three air stones. And uh, yeah, that, that should do the trick. It was really probably even fine without them, but it just wasn't a risk I wanted to take. The weather, like I said before, a little bit weird. So I want to make sure that there's an extra backup in there just to be safe. I also came through and I put some carbon pads in the front of these waterfall filters. I don't normally run carbon in my freshwater systems just because I think stability and consistency is really important. And carbon like does a good job for a few days and then it wears out really fast and things fluctuate. Yeah, one of my neighbors over here, they had a mosquito company out fogging the place, so just to be safe. It didn't look like it came anywhere near over here, but just to be safe. Wanted to get some carpet in there to help remove anything that could have come this way or might splash up off of something else. I think I'm pretty good though, but uh, this is one of those things where it just happened out of nowhere. I didn't have time. Other, if I had known, I would have come out and thrown a tarp over this, but I, I didn't have any kind of heads up or anything like that. So, that's really just for a few days, just to be safe. Also, it's actually a little bit more than that. To elaborate on why I moved those other koi out. One, they were getting way too big. And like I said, I like to move them to the big pond when they get bigger. Not the one I showed you in my garage, but my friend has a huge pond over on her property. Two, they produce a lot of waste. So that's not really going to work in this situation. And all that excess waste isn't going to be great because with the sturgeon, I'm feeding anywhere from three to five times a day. That's not going to be permanent. Uh, two to three times a day will be permanent. But when you get fish in and you know that they're in a tank with a lot of other fish, oftentimes those vendors, the people who are keeping them, are feeding them frequently to make sure that they're all getting food. So that way they're kind of acclimated to being fed only to really best for sturgeon three times a day so that in combination with all those other fish it's just it would have been way too much waste i want to make sure that the filters can keep up with everything because that's a lot of extra food i have to put a lot of food in here to make sure that the goldfish and koi are getting fed and the sturgeon it's a lot of food making sure everybody gets fed i have to put excess food in here to make sure that the sturgeon are getting to the food because the goldfish and the koi have such a voracious appetite and then another reason i have carnivorous plants in here not looking too good right now but they're actually looking a lot better than they were just a week ago carnivorous plants don't like water with a high tds that's total dissolve solids. They don't like a lot of particulates, a lot of inorganic matter, a lot of nutrient in their water. So another reason, can't have all those koi, all that extra food, all that extra waste in here with those. I need to keep the water clean. I want it to be easy. I don't want this to be a struggle. And then, as I pointed out before, the one koi ate my Oscars. I was like, you gotta get out of here. That was all the reasoning behind that. It, I didn't really explain that. I gave a little bit, but I didn't get very thorough. We do actually have food made for sturgeon on the way, but it's being shipped from the UK, so it's gonna take a minute to get here. I'll dive into all that in a separate video. I think it's important when doing anything with animals, especially on YouTube and you're showcasing something, to make it as informative and as educational as possible. So that being said, I was gonna do like a whole entire rundown, everything about the sturgeon, about the anatomy, what the barbells do, evolution, like all kinds of fun stuff. I don't think people are going to want to watch like 16, 17 minutes to get to that sort of thing. So I'm going to do that in a whole entire separate video. Instead, this is just, 
I got my sturgeon in, my dream fish. I've worn these since I was a kid. Could not even begin to explain to you how happy I am with them. They're a really cool fish. They swim upside down at nighttime. Well, one of them does. Top of the surface, they just, they crack me up. And they look like sharks. They kind of remind me of the smooth hounds, starry smooth hounds. You know what I'm talking about? Remind me of those. Like I was saying, I just think that there's kind of a responsibility when it comes to animals, living things, to be as elaborate as possible. So I do want to make a final disclaimer. Sturgeon are not for fish tanks. They, even though they're sterlets, which stay smaller, they still get huge. They need a minimum of a thousand gallons. This is not their permanent home. This is only their home for a few more months, actually. Then they'll be in the 720 over in my garage. And then uh, next year, I'm going to be building out a whole entire much bigger system here for them. And since they grow slower, I have a little bit more time to get that done. But like I said, this is not something for a fish tank, not for longevity anyways. And I personally feel like if you get a new pet, you need to be in it for the long haul. So I wouldn't say get one of these, keep it for a few years and give it away. Nah, don't do that. Don't get one if you're not ready to take care of it for its entire life. It's not really responsible, but I get the urge. I understand that. Not trying to come across preachy. It's just like a thing in my conscience when I'm dealing with the animals. I, I, I get kind of serious. I can't help it. I love them and I want to protect them and take care of them. And I would feel terrible if I influenced somebody or anybody to get these and not take care of them properly. Like that would, that would suck. They're living things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, throw some more food in here. This is the Bug Bites Ocean Nutrition Spectrum, a whole bunch of stuff blended together. Notice that it kind of takes a minute, like the water has to get a little bit stinky for them before they go for it. And, uh, but they're eating really, really, really well so far. I know there wasn't a lot of plant stuff going on this week. And by a lot, I mean none. But people have been asking about my animals and getting the sturgeon, that was a big deal to me. I wanted to make a vlog about it and talk about it and share it with everybody. You not hungry anymore? Came over at all of his dandelion. Not interested in any lettuce cactus or what's the that the pellets yeah not interested i get that not always in the mood i do try to make sure there's a lot of variety in his diet and yeah goes through and picks out what he wants i don't know why i say he colby's a girl but it's just habit kind of been a theme for me this year i've been making an effort if there's something i want or i've wanted for a long time something i've wanted to do for a long time i've been more motivated more driven to get it done and make it happen i'm the only one who can make my dreams come true so and this to me is kind of an example of that might <laughs> seem dramatic because they're fish, but to me, I don't know, means a little bit more than that to me. I've wanted them for such a long time. It's just such an awesome experience, and I feel like truly blessed, really, to be able to get them and have them and experience them and share it with everybody. And <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Had a phone call and forgot to put my phone on silent. Anyways, like I was saying, truly feel blessed, excited, happy to all the sheriffs, everybody, and uh, I look forward to more videos with the animals and the pets. This guy right here, he's gonna stand there and stare at that food until the tortoise comes over and finishes it. He's not going to budge. Are you, Tucker? Oh, you budged! You're trying to make me a liar. Fun things planned for next week, garden tours and whatnot. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. And a uh, more in-depth video about those sturgeon. Probably gonna be a lot of repetition from what was in here. Sorry. Good. gonna be reusing some clips. Hey, but don't forget to like the video, subscribe as well, and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Thanks for hanging out and sharing this experience with me. It was a lot of fun. All right, and as always, everybody, most importantly, ah, whoa, whoa, oh, wait. Oh, no, no, hold on. This is the vlog. I don't end things like that. As I was saying before, when you want something, gotta do it yourself. Get it done, make it happen. You're the only one who can make your dreams come true. And I'm absolutely thrilled we got to experience that together. I'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye.